not sure why I'm really into fairies lately, but I am. And so I'm going to make mine fairy themed. This is the Victorian Exploding Picture Box that you got in your kit. Um, you've got also got some paper and you feel free to use any paper you have. I just chose according to the colors that you requested on your retreat forms. So um, we've got the box. I've got a little bit of glitter, um, some flowers, and then I chose a fairy to put in the center of my box. And I just picked this up at uh, AC Moore, I believe, and it was like a couple bucks. So that's going to go in the center of my box. I also have a stone. Um, we're going to use some of the moss again, and then um, after that, we'll just decorate. So let's start with the box and get our, uh, our paper attached. One of the things that you'll need to check is that your figurine, whatever you choose, uh, will fit inside your box. So mine will fit perfectly inside this big box, the big part of it. It will not fit inside the small part. So um, there are several ways to do this. You can layer, if you've got a smaller piece, you can layer your box like this and lift it up and put your cover on. However, because my small one won't fit inside there very well, um, I'm going to use mine the other way and I'm going to use this as the bottom and put this on top. So I will have a double layered Victorian box, okay? All right, so the first thing we need to do is cover and the uh, paper I've, I've chosen has this fairy on here and it's not going to fit perfectly but it will fit so I need to and I'm going to cut this into pieces to do this so I need to put this I need to, to put this around and then trace so finding her feet right there and then I need to cover her as well so I'm going to go up actually to where her dresses and go that way and I want to make sure that her wings are in there so I think that should be about right right there so I'm going to start by tracing that yep okay so that fits pretty well um, I actually could have gone to the left a little bit um, but that's okay so now I'm going to take my ruler and just connect my two sides so I know where to cut the bottom part. All right, so I'm gonna start with that. And I'm gonna cut inside my lines. first fairy for the outside of the box. Uh, now you could do um, you could do this other fairy, you know, you've, you've got, you should have two sheets of paper. So you could do this other fairy on the opposite side, which I think I'm going to do, only I'm going to move her slightly so that I get the rest of her dress in this time. So I'm going to move it over to here. Same thing, I'm just going to trace around my paper this time. Okay, and um, I'll cut that out in a minute. Okay, now the other option you have is to do some mushrooms, and obviously the whole mushroom is not going to fit. So I'm going to go down here and get into this, this area and cut off just part of that mushroom. So I'm going to go about right there. Get this sheet out of the way. Actually, I'll go ahead and do it on this one since I've got to cut into it again anyway. Make it easier. So I'm going to put this right down at the bottom. Now that gives me uh, two, three areas for my box, and this is the bigger one we're working on. And I'm gonna use this little area too. So I'm gonna put that down. Okay, so now 
now I've got one, two, three, four, and we need six total. So I'm going to go over to my other, um, actually I, what I might do is use the reverse side. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to just cut three of these instead. Um, Actually, no, I'm going to use that for the bottom, I think. So I'm going to stick with this, and I'm going to go ahead and cut out uh, matching ones on this, too. So I've got this down here. And this is, you know, completely up to you. You can use any part of your paper that you choose. Okay, so that gives me six pieces, and I'm going to cut those out real quick. So I've measured these, and they are about two by two and a half inches, um, two inches wide by two and, two and a half inches long. So I'm going to now just cut a strip to use on the inside, and you could use, you, you know, you could do it this way, this way, however you want to do it. Um, I know I want my top to be these tree parts. So I'm going to leave that, and I'm going to work from the bottom here. All right, I've cut a different, uh, just a bunch of mixed pieces. One still has the little butterflies on it, and um, so basically they're just picked. But I can use either side to mix and match. My fairy has pink and purple in it, and the paper on the reverse side does as well. Bring that up so you can see it. So I've chosen this Dusty Concord. Uh, distress ink and I'm going to go around and distress all of the edges to all of my pieces to begin with before we attach paper. You could also uh, gesso this first but if you see my pattern has kind of some brown in it so I'm I'm perfectly okay with the natural behind so I'm just going to go in and distress my edges. Now remember you have to do both sides because it is going to lift up. This is thicker than cardstock, so you're going to have to go up on it. You can't just go from the side like we generally do, but don't forget to do your sides either. And as you see, this is absorbing pretty quickly, and I'm having to re-ink quite a lot. So just do the amount that you like. It doesn't have to be super dark. It can be, you know, light and pale, however you want it. It's your project. I'm kind of looking this liking this modeled, not all the same look. Go quite a ways up on your um, pieces though, so that when your paper goes on, you don't have to worry about, you know, if you have any blank spots, unless you want that look. Like I said, I'm, I'm totally okay with some of the brown showing through on mine because of the, the pattern that I've chosen. And this part in here is gonna get covered, so I'm starting in there and working out. I'm just going to go around the center here because I'm going to attach moss on the bottom, but um, I want it to blend as well. And if you know, sometimes the moss will have little holes in it as you attach it. So I'm going to go ahead and add some purple right in the center. All right, I'm good with that. I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. And on this one, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to distress the edges, but I'm not going to do the center because I'm actually going to put a piece of paper on there. Alright, 
So both sides are done. And now we're just gonna go around the edges here. So all of my sides are now saturated and there's one last area we have to do and that's we're going to turn this over and we're going to do, if you see here, I'll lift it up, there's some edges that kind of show a little bit. So I'm going to take my dauber and go around that as well. Now it's not going to get in there, but it will take away or it will add some sharpness to those corners um, and just make it look a little more finished. That one is now done. Um, if you want to go ahead and do that to all your pieces now, you can do that, or you can wait and do it when you move on to the next step with the next set of, you know, your next um, papers that you chose. Same with the top. You can do it now or you can do it later. The only part we have left to cut now is the bottom section here. Now, keep in mind that that is going to be glued to something else. So if you don't care, um, about that because, you know, no one's probably going to go like this inside your, you know, this is going to be like, this is going to be glued onto here. So no one's going to be looking that closely. And if you've got it distressed like this, you may not feel like you need to do that. It's totally up to you. I am going to cover mine and I'm going to use this reverse side. So I'm going to set it on here and draw around and then cut that out. going to turn this over and check the size and make sure and see it's still a little big so I'm going to go in and just trim these sides just a, just a hair bit more And that looks pretty good to me. So I just gone in and, and retrimmed one little side after I cut the first amount. And uh, so I've got that. All right, so this is the side I'm actually gonna use. Now, if you have a distressor, you can pull that out now and use that, or you can just use your scissors if you don't have a distressor. Um, for the longest time, I used nothing but scissors and it works just fine. I just happened to find this on clearance and so I picked it up. So I'm just going to run it over my edges. And I actually almost think, I haven't had this a real long time. I've only used it a couple times and I actually think I like using scissors a little better. It goes a lot faster. The only good thing about this is it does not, you don't risk cutting your paper quite as much as you do with scissors. That would be the only real advantage to having this. Okay, so I've got that distressed. Now, if you want to distress your edges on this before you put it on here, you would do that now. And I'm going to do just a little bit more of the purple. And I mean very, very little. Just kind of to cover up those white bits. I didn't even re-dip it in ink. I'm just using what's already on my dauber. And there we go. All right, and so now it's time to attach this. You can use tape or you can use glue. I'm using my good old trusty journey glue, or journey glaze, because everybody knows I love that, and a paintbrush, just so I can get it on smoothly. So I'm going to put some, whoop, just a brand new bottle, and I forgot to take the top off. So I'm just going to put a blob right in the middle and I'm going to use my brush and spread it around. Now 
you could do this on your paper as well to make sure that you get all the way to the edge. Totally up to you how you do it. And I'm just going to lay my piece on. Okay, so that piece is on. Now remember that's going to be your bottom and when you fold it up, okay, so it'll look like that. The inside is where I'm putting my moss. All right, so on the outside is where I want my decorative pieces and actually I may end up uh, interspersing them now that I'm looking at it and I think I actually will. So. I'm going to start with, uh, it doesn't matter which one, just choose one. But remember that when you put your image on, that you want to go this way. Okay, so it's so that so that your girl is standing upright. Now I can see already that these are a little wide because I cut them, you know, exactly the, the size of that. So I'm going to go in and trim off just a hair. On either side. Actually, I'll do it down here by her feet. Okay, and that will give me um, some space around it again so that some of my distressing shows like that. All right, and um, just do it, you know, the amount you want. But once you do that and you have a size, then go ahead and choose your other pieces and cut those to be the same. And I'm going to use that first one that I cut as my guide, stack them together nicely, and then just cut along that same line that you cut the first one so that they're all kind of similar in size. Okay, there we go. And again, they do not have to be absolutely perfect because you're going to be distressing them. At this point, you're going to distress all of your little squares and just like we did before. So if you use the scissors, continue to use the scissors because you'll want the same amount of distressing on these that you have on your other pieces. Just try to stay, you know, consistent. So go ahead and finish all six of your pieces and then go ahead and edge them just like we did before, just a little bit. Like I said, I'm not even, if I can help it, I'm not even going to re-ink. I'm just barely touching the white edges so that um, it looks more uniform. Very simple like that. Okay, and go ahead and get all six pieces done. So you'll need to do the same thing to your six inside piece, pieces. And what I did was took a piece from the outside, set it on top of my stack and cut around those as well. And then you're gonna distress those the same way that you did the outside ones. All right, all of our pieces are now uh, distressed and have been inked and it's time to start attaching them. So I'm gonna start on the inside and I'm just going to layer them. Now, keep in mind, if you want to do pockets, you could do pockets as well on the inside. Um, mine is going to be strictly decorative. I'm not going to put any, uh, I'm not going to make this into any mini or anything like that. If you want to, though, make your pockets and then um, attach those and then attach your images. <music> All my images are attached on the inside. I'm just going to flip it over and do the exact same thing on the outside. When you finish gluing both sides, then you should have something that looks like this. And it's time to put our moss in the center here. And you can use hot glue. I'm just going to go ahead and use Journey Glaze because I already have it out and I'm working with it. And I'm just going to squeeze some on here. You want quite a good 
good bit. And then just start placing your mole, your um, your moss. And I'm going to put some like that. And it doesn't, you don't want it to be like consistent. You don't want it to be just one blob. So take your pieces and, and actually work with them and see how you like it. with that I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to set that aside to dry and we will move on to working on our smaller boxes and our roof. For the smaller box you're going to do exactly the same thing you did for the top box and cut your pieces out, distress them, and then uh, use your inks to distress, to, to ink distress it and then we're going to glue those on. Exactly the same process, just choose your paper, make your cuts, and uh, Get that all glued on and then we'll come back. Our smaller box is now covered in paper. And as you see, I've done the stripes this, on the inside. And then on the outside, I've done uh, both stripes and the uh, tree looking area, which will blend in the roof that we're going to do. So the next thing we need to do now is start this to uh, assemble it so that it can start drying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave two spaces open so you have a little area to actually reach in because one I feel is just too small and I don't know, we'll see when I get done, but um, I'm taking my fine line glue, well the glue isn't made by them but the bottle is, and I'm just going to run a bead right along the sides of the pieces, like so. And I'll bring it up close so you can see it. Okay, so I've got to be right along the side, but it doesn't go on either side. That, that's why I'm using the fine line, and it just makes it easier. I'm going to repeat the process on the other side so that when I bring them together, the tackiness of the two will hold it uh, together. So now I've got two, and I can bring that up, and I'm just going to hold that together for a second and let it seal. All right. And once that dries, then I'll continue and go around and do the other sides. All the sides for the smaller box have been folded up and glued. That means that the four sides here have been glued together. And these two that we talked about leaving open before, I've put a clasp on. Now, I did not include these in your um, kit because I wasn't sure if you were going to make an album and layer yours or if you wanted to do it exactly like mine. But I got this from Miriam's Crafting Supplies. There's lots of online stores where you can get these little clasp type things for, you know, 25 cents. They're not very expensive. Tim Holtz makes some. They're a little more expensive. If you have that, great. Um, and you want to use it, feel free. So that's my my little box now. Okay. And it's not completely dry, so I'm not going to unclasp it. But basically what will happen is once I unclasp it, these two pieces here will fold down. All right. So I'm going to set that off to the side and we're going to work on the top. So I did basically the same thing that we did with the other um, box. I traced around the outside first. Let me get this in place here. Oh, I think I have it upside down. Yep. So I traced around it first. And then I just lifted one piece at a time and drew my line. And then went to the next one, drew my line. And continued all the way around until I had all of the lines in place. And the reason that I needed to do that is because um, then I can cut the sections and still have some area where it will be exposed just like it is on the box. Okay, so my next step now is just to cut this out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this into the triangles and I'm going to stay on the line for right now because I'm going to figure out which one, um, I'm going to figure out which piece I want to use as my guide. Okay, so right now I'm at this this position. Okay, so that would be one, two, three. So um, be on this side, one, two, three, and we're going there. Now I am not going to keep this 
part because once this folds, once this folds, this will all tuck together like that. And um, I will probably use some trim instead. So I'm not going to use that as my actual, I'm not going to use paper on that. So I've got that there and I can just take it and slide it down. Okay, and now I can figure out, see that's about right. Although, let me get this, let me get those black marks off. Because obviously we don't want that showing. Okay, so now my black lines are off of the triangle part and I can lay this on here. And again, let's see, we are this way, so it'd be one, two, three. So we're in on this one. And all I have to do is slide this down and then I can figure out where to cut here. So I'm gonna make a couple of little marks, about right there and right there, okay? And then I can take my ruler, go straight across, and that should be right. So let's test that out. And before you cut all the others, I recommend that you just try one. So going right inside the line. One, two, three, so we're right here. And that looks like it's just about perfect. Um, I'll lift it up so you can see. So there's just a tiny bit all the way around of space, okay? So that's just about perfect. So I'm gonna use this one as my example. It should fit perfectly in all of them. It should be symmetrical, but double checking, yep. So yes, this is going to be perfect for all the sections. So this is going to be my guide. I'm going to go back in here now and cut this out. And actually, I'm going to cut this into section and then, then cut it out from there. So once I have all these cut out, cut out we'll come back. Um, I will, we'll just, we will do the same exact steps that we did before. We will distress with the paper distressor and then we will distress with distress ink and then we'll glue it down. So I'll be back once I've got all that completed. I wanted to quickly show you that on the inside of the cover I decided to just leave it whole and I will score it so that it folds and the reason why is because I've got this stripe and I wanted the stripe to stay somewhat consistent. Um, so doing you know doing it with the the triangles would have made the stripes go every which way. So I decided to do it this way. This is just because the way my paper is. If you want to cut your triangles for the inside, um, you're more than welcome to do that. Just go with whatever works with your paper. My pieces are in place and this is the inside. Now I've gone ahead and cut out my corners. Um, they are meant to add stability and if you don't mind the look of that on the outside because you don't really want it on the inside where your box is going to sit on top of the other box. Um, and you could cover it with trim, so that's totally up to you. But I went ahead and cut mine out, and I'm going to glue, which takes a little bit more time to um, keep that together now. But to me, it was worth the, the wait time because those were a nuisance to me. So totally up to you how you do it. I'm going to go ahead and glue this shut now, and we'll be back. So one of the things I want to do before I go much further is um, I'm going to put this stick pin through the center of my roof and it will stand upright like, like this and add an element on the top. Now I do have two and I could do it double sided um, but I think instead I'm going to maybe put an image on here, I'm not sure. But to start with I want to fill it with glitter and a, and a rose. These are just spell binders, uh, mixed media, or sorry, media mixage stick pins and they're just from my stash. They're not something I sell in the store. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is uncork my, and I'm using the Mardi Gras because it has both pink and purple in it. 
and I'm going to put a little bit in and then I'm going to take my rose and stick that down in the center. I don't think I got quite enough. Okay, stick that down in the center and get it kind of where I want it and then I can fill in with extra glitter around it. Now remember, you can't fill it all the way to the top because we still got to put glue in. And you've got to have room for that to expand. But you want it pretty full. And that could hold an image. I mean, it could hold a lot of different things, but I just thought it would be cute with this rose and the, the uh, glitter. Kind of give it that fairy look with the flowers too. All right, so I've got that filled up and now I'm gonna just use my journey glaze and I'm just gonna go in and let it flow. And I don't want it to go over the edge, so if I have to move it, I will. And you can't put too much on at a time. You've gotta let it soak in. Why do we always fall in love? Why do we always fall in love? Got enough in there now that I think that it will soak in. And I'm just going to actually take a piece of piece of scrap and just make sure that it's not flowing off on any edges. And it doesn't appear to be. It looks like it's working pretty good. I don't really have any coming off on here, so we're good. All right, so that's going to sit and dry. And then we will insert that into our top and finish decorating because we are almost finished with this project. All right, see you soon. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of decorating things. Um, one of the things I did was took some pink gimp and I sprayed it with some purple glimmer mist just so it would blend in with my box and I will be attaching that around the edge here. So I have this little metal uh, piece that says dream on it and I thought that would look good in the bottom part. I wasn't sure what I wanted to put inside there. I'd you know, thrown around different ideas like making it you know, a candy holder or something like that, but I really don't want to do that. So I'm just going to make it a decorative piece and I'm going to paint it pink and I'm just using some uh, apple barrel bubble gum colored paint and I'm just going to paint over the entire thing and it'll probably take a couple of coats. And I will dry that with my heat gun and be back in a second. Uh, I'm going to do it two, two coats and then I'll be back. I have two coats of paint on here now. And so I'm going to use Inca Gold. And this particular one is called um, Old Silver. And I'm not sure why they call it that because it's really kind of a goldish color. But anyway, um, it's a light gold. So that would be my guess why. Put a little on my finger and I'm just going to highlight the dream part. And these little raised areas around the edge as well. Just giving it some highlight. Nothing too shiny, bright in your face. I have now. And I'm just going to go around the edges as well. I'm going to do it a little bit heavier there. That looks pretty good. Now, on the back, I did not paint this copper part because it's mostly not going to show. But I'm going to go ahead and just put a few highlights in so that if it is seen at all, it'll have a little bit of that highlighted look.
All right, on the inside here, I'm going to put some more moss, just like we did before. Um, let me clean this up a little bit so there's no wet paint. All right, so just like we did on the top, I'm going to put some um, moss in the bottom, and I'm just going to put some glue in. Take some pieces and stick it down in there. All these crossroads in my life, I cannot account. And now I'm going to place this inside here. But before I do that, I have four of these purple flowers left, and I'm going to, where these holes are in this, I'm going to stick them through there and attach them to the back. And then I'll cut off the long pieces after these are dry. Now, you would not have to cut these off. You could, um, you know, just roll them up and stick them in the back. It's whatever you want. I'm just going to go ahead and cut them off, though. As I have to make okay, and again, hang on to your stems. They come in handy. And twist these together. All right, so now that's what we have. And you can, you know, play with the little green parts, move them around, do whatever you need to do to make it look right. And now we can set this down in here just like that. And I'm going to set it against that back. Okay. And just to secure it, I'm going to add a little bit of glue on either side, right where it's going to touch against that MDF piece. Now that's what the inside looks like. So when you lift this up and lock it down, then when they open it up, that's what they'll see. Okay, so that finishes that piece off. I'm going to go ahead and attach my gimp trim now. So what I've done is I started it with a hot glue drop and just one little drop right there. And now I'm just going to attach it periodically. So like halfway and again at the end. And I'm just going to run that around all the way. And there's what we have with the gimp trim on it. Okay, so when we fold, get our bo box back over here. Okay, so we still have to attach this, and I'm going to go ahead and do that while my hot glue is out. This will always be Okay, so now that is all attached, and once we lift this up, like so, and put our top on, okay, and it's now going to look like that. Okay. All right, so I'm going to let that air dry a little bit, make sure it's good and dry. And we 
we can lock this piece up. This just slides right down into I think I may have glued it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I sure did. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we can close that up. And this is going to get glued on top of this. I'm going to turn this upside down. And I am going to use hot glue for this only because it's um, going to take too long otherwise. So I'm going to go right along the edge of the four pieces, not on the ones that are going to open. And find my center. And put that right on there, like that. Okay, pat it down and let it dry. And there we go, it's the beginning of our finishing pro of our finished product. And now we have that. So the only thing we have to finish now is this upper area and then any last minute decorating that we want to do. And I am going to, I pulled some, some roses and I want to add those on. Um, I think I'm going to add them on the boxes that have no, uh, no color. And these are the pink and the pale pink. No, uh, real fill flowers from the store and you can use any flowers you want So this is what we have so far, okay, and it needs one more on this one just to make it blend, but because of that lock, I can't put it in exactly the same spot, so it's going to be off just a little bit, but that's okay. All right, and there we go. Okay, so now all we have left is that stick pin in the top, and so we'll work on those a little bit. All right, we're going to start on our final decorating, and um, so I've got one of the pale uh, real fill flowers, and I'm just going to take this green part off, and it just comes right off if you pull. And the reason that I did that is because I want this very last layer of petals to come off as well. So I'm going to peel those off. And do it carefully because they are glued onto the other petals. The only reason why is I want this just a little bit smaller, but I still want it to blend in with the other flowers. Okay, and now we have a smaller rose just like the ones that are on the outside. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take just a little bit of glue and I'm, I'm really just a few little strokes. I don't even want drops. Just kind of rubbing it on a little bit here and there. Okay, and now I'm going to take my glitter. And again, this is the Mardi Gras. And I'm just going to shake it over the top. glitter on the back of that now as well. And I'm going to attach that to the back of my pin. Okay. 
take my cover and now I'm going to put some lines of the glitter down the center here and I don't want it super heavy to cover the entire thing and it's not going to be a perfect line I'm just going to rub that and then rub and then put some glue on I mean some glitter Okay, and now we've covered up that line. I'm going to go ahead and do all of the lines like that. I've got a nice sparkly element to my top. Once my stick pin goes in there, it will blend really well. And you see I've avoided doing the very top. And we'll do that after we stick the stick pin through. So now I'm just going to go back in and see if there's any place that needs to be touched up. Why do we always fall in love? Now this flower is going to be on the inside of the cover covering up the stick pin right in here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to add a little bit of tiny glue here and there. Just brushing it on. Now if you have Link of Stella, you could definitely use that as well. But I want this to blend with my other glitters. So I'm choosing to do it this way. So I'm going back to this pin now and I'm looking and from the side I can see that glue and that's going to bother me just because that's me. And I am going to go ahead and add some glitter to the back of this as well. So I'm just going to give it a coat. And I don't want it too heavy so it doesn't run over the sides but I want it completely covered. totally helps clear that up so you don't see that glue line. So all that's left now is to let that dry. Attach the pin down the center, down the center of our top here. Put that flower on the, on the underside and we are done. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and um, again thanks for participating in the retreat.